Hi, this is Jim at Mr. Stewart's Lessons, and we're going to do a scratch lesson here today. Um, we're go what we're going to do is we're going to have a cat to chase chase a mouse, which is going to chase our mouse pointer. And so, what I'm going to do first, I'm gonna we're going to keep our cat. I'm going to move him off to the side, and I'm going to add another animal. I'm going to add a mouse. This is our new sprite from File. Uh, these are all of the um, the different categories that we of things we can add. I'm going to look in the animals category, and if I look down here, scroll down, uh, they're in alphabetical order. I'm going to find a mouse right here. I'm going to add him in. You notice he's really big. Um, he's taking up half the screen. Most things are going to come in too big. Uh, this here, the the arrow is pointing in is the shrink, and I can just click on him until he's the size that I need. So I'll make him a lot a lot smaller here. He is after all a mouse. He should be pretty small. So when I'm done, I'm done shrinking him, I can just click somewhere else and that'll turn the shrink command off. Now to make him move, I want him, what I want him to do is I want him to chase my, my mouse to chase my mouse pointer. So he's going to point, what's going to happen is we want him to point towards the mouse pointer and continue to move towards the mouse pointer. So uh, Normally, what we what we'd like to do is to make a game start when I click the green flag. The green flag is sort of the scratch way of saying start, start running the uh, game or the program. Um, so over here, uh, we're going to put in when green flag clicked. There's uh, there's other ways to start it. It could be by uh, clicking on the space key or clicking on a certain sprite. But we're going to click when use the wind green flag clicked right now. This is what what's going to start the game. So I'm going to drag that in there. So you should uh, pick up that and put a click on control, pick on click on wind green flag clicked and put that in there right now. Okay, so if we've done that. What I'd like to do is I'd like to make my uh, mouse point towards my mouse pointer. He wants to turn in the direction. So anything that involves how the character is going to, how the sprite's going to move is going to be in the motion section. And uh, there, you notice we can move, we can turn, we can point in direction. Uh, the one I want is point towards. Um, and the and if you click on, you notice there's different things I can point towards. I can point towards the mouse pointer, or I can point towards sprite one. You notice the names of the sprites. These ones are sprite one and sprite two. Um, these are the names of the different actors. Um, it always helps to name things what I want them to be called. So uh, what I'm going to do before I put this in here, I'm going to rename my both my sprites. I'll come over here and I'll, I'll click on, well, I'll just click on the mouse right now and I'll click up here. This is going to give you, allow you to name the sprite. So I'm going to name him and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call him mouse. Um, it's a lot easier to know what you're talking about, right? Um, but he's what he's he's not what he's going to point towards is the mouse pointer. So I change that to mouse pointer, and I put this under here. Okay, so that means when I click the green flag, he'll point towards the mouse pointer. You'll see that he's just turned towards it, right? But of course, we need him to move as well, right? So um, this is the move command. You can change how far you want him to move by clicking in here, right? So uh, I, if I want to make him move, say, eight steps, for example, I can change that number right here. So let's make him point towards, and we'll make him move eight steps, and I'll put this in here. So now if I click here, he points towards the mouse pointer and move towards the mouse pointer. But the thing is, he's only doing it once, which isn't very useful. He's slowly creeping towards my green flag, but of course, it's, it's only, he's only going to do it when I click on the green flag, which isn't very useful. So, what I really need to do is make him do it over and over again. That is to make it a continuing action. So I'm going to go to the control section. The control section is all the things that control uh, how the overall program runs and the, when things repeat, when, when you have certain conditions. The one I'm going to use a lot is this uh, my friend here forever, right? It's, this is called a loop in programming. It means something happens over and over again. You'll notice if I put it here, if I put it up on top, how it stretches down, right? It, that means it's going to go around all of this, right? And now if I click on here, you'll notice 
he's moving towards my mouse pointer. This is a way to make him move. Now there's one thing that's going to go wrong. When he gets to the mouse pointer, he does this ugly. And I can always stop it by clicking the stop sign. So you notice when he gets towards the mouse pointer, he does that ugly thing when he's moving back and forth, which is really annoying. Um, there's a way to keep that from happening. And uh, that's by, we can have an if statement that's going to actually keep that from happening. An if statement down here, an if statement means do something if something is true. So I'm going to pick up an if statement. This means if I pick this up, right, and I can wrap it around here, right, this means if a certain thing is true, then you should point towards the mouse pointer, right? Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have an if statement, I'm going to go over to operators. Operators are going to, uh, change how, how things can happen or, or put different things together. So and what I'm going to do is I have an operator, I have an if, and the one I'm looking for here is not. If not. So and what we're saying is if it's not true that, you see these, when we have these, this is a hexagon, a hexagon in programming means a condition, means something is or isn't happening, right? Um, and so if it's not true, and what we want to do is we want him to move towards the mouse pointer unless he is touching the mouse pointer, then we want him to stop. Now, so if we want to see, so what we want to do is we're saying if it's not true that he's touching the mouse pointer, we want him to point towards the mouse pointer and move. So to see if we're touching the mouse pointer, we need to use sensing. Sensing is how we find if different things are happening. Uh, if we, we sense uh, where the mouse is or if we're touching the mouse or if we're touching another actor, if we're touching a color, things like that. Um, uh, so, and if I look, the first one is touching and there's various things I could be touching. I could be touching Sprite 1, which is the cat because we haven't named it yet. I could be touching the edge of the screen or I could be touching the mouse pointer, which is what I'm looking for. I'm going to change it to mouse pointer and I'll put that in here. And uh, this is going to solve my problem of him wiggling back and forth. So if I click here, you'll notice he gets to the mouse pointer and then he just stops. That's what we want. Um, and that's so now we have a mouse. The mouse is moving towards the mouse pointer and stopping. I'm going to put in one more thing here. I want the cat to chase the mouse. So I'm going to click on the cat. Okay, so before we've been working on the mouse's code all along. Uh, and you notice when we click on the cat, the mouse's code goes away because we're doing a script for a different actor. Every actor has his own command, right? And sometimes a mistake that you, people can make is putting their commands on the wrong actor or even on the stage by accident. So we need to make sure that we're clicking, always clicking on the right actor when we put our code on something. So I'm going to click on the cat, okay? I'm going to rename him. I'm going to call him cat. So you should click up here and put cat. I'm also going to shrink him down just a little bit, not as much as the mouse. And uh, I'll click somewhere else to turn the shrinking part off. So what I want the cat to do is to chase point towards the mouse. Okay. I'm going to put in control. Go to control. There's another when I'm going to put in another when green flag clicked, right? So uh, when I click the green flag, it's going to start the mouse and it's going to start the cat both, where they both have when green flag clicked up at the start. And uh, I'm going to put in another forever loop because he also is going to keep doing what he does forever. I'm going to go back to motion. I'm going to do point towards again. Okay, we're, he's not going to point towards the mouse pointer, he's going to point towards the mouse. That is this little fellow right here, the green guy, right? The mouse pointer, of course, is my arrow. So he's going to point towards the mouse. I'm going to put that in here. Now, if, if he moves as fast or faster than the mouse, he's just going to catch him right away. So I'm going to move him about half as fast as the mouse. The mouse was going... Uh, the mouse was going moving eight steps every turn, so I'm going to make the cat, I'm going to make him just move four steps every turn. And you can play around with this, change how fast you want each character to move. And I'm going to put that here. Okay. 
And now, when I click here, you'll notice we have a mouse running away from a cat, just like in the cartoons. Now, uh, and now we have the same problem when the cat touches the mouse, he wiggles back and forth. So uh, I'm going to go to control, I'm going to put in an if statement, just as we did before. Right? We want the, the cat to move towards the mouse when he's not touching the mouse. So um, I'm going to put in an if statement, and then I'm going to Right, so we want to say we want him to move towards the mouse if he's not already touching it. So I'm going to go to operators, which is I'm going to find the not operator. This is a, a condition here. I'm going to put the not operator inside my condition, and then I go go towards sensing, and I'm going to put in touching, and I'm going to put in mouse, not the mouse pointer. Right, he's moving towards the actual little mouse here, and I'll put that in here. And now he's going to move he's going to chase the mouse but when he catches the mouse he'll stop now we want him to do something a little more interesting when he catches the mouse like say gotcha we'll do that in another lesson I'm gonna stop for now uh, I will see you in the next lesson last of all we also need to save our lesson so uh, the easiest way to save it is we can click file and click save as and uh, I can call this cat and mouse for example um, cat and mouse game and click OK uh, now um, if I save it again I'm gonna, not going to have to enter that if I click save again it's just going to save it you'll see that thing will pop up um, or as a shortcut I can just click on this little uh, that's a floppy disk for um, which uh, those of you who are as old as me will recognize. Nobody else is going to know what this thing's called. This used to be called a floppy disk. Um, but this little square is also going to save the game. And I'll see you at the next lesson.